What's up, Internet? You're tuned in to episode 12 of Nintendo Noise, Flip Screen Games' weekly Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friends, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello. And the mayor of Haken, Mr. Chewy Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Welcome back, boys. I am, I'm ready, you know? So we've, you know, it's it's a soft week news-wise, but, like, so much Nintendo stuff feels very imminent that, like, it's going to oh, be a yeah. juicy one. I can feel it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm ready. Big, big week. Big well, I week. mean, as of, as of people listening to this, they'll have already played the N64 games, which I'm very jealous of, because cause current me hasn't played them yet. No. The future me will have played them. Yeah, so by the time you're listening to this... up right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but by the time you're listening to this, we are knee-deep in N64 territory. And, you know, wouldn't you know it, on this week's show, we're going to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the reveal of the Nintendo Switch, which is crazy because that feels simultaneously like a lifetime ago. But when you say five years, that feels way too long, right? But yeah, yeah, way, way too long. We we got a bunch of you wrote in. We have some of your memories, some of your kind of early days with the Switch and or, or you know, getting your first look at it and all that stuff. So we're going to talk all about that stuff in our talking point this week. Uh, but before that, I'm going to remind you that this episode of Nintendo Noise is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of October. And those folks are, of course, of course. Christian Oliveria, Christopher Valenz, a.k.a. That Doc Guy, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Asobi, Wakahula, and Zaid Ida. Thank you all so much for your support on this spooky, spooky month of October. We really appreciate you, and uh, y'all are the real to the real. Thank you so much for uh, continuing to help us keep these mics on. So, speaking of the Patreon, uh, that's the best place that you can go and support all the weird, wacky stuff that we're doing here at Flip Screen Games. Uh, of course, there are a bunch of cool perks that you can get access to, including uh, one more thing, which is our patron exclusive podcast where we keep the mics rolling. We talk about stuff going on in our lives outside the world of video games. Like this week, we talked about uh, pumpkin picking and some other basic white bitch stuff that people love to do in the fall. It was a good time. So if you want to hear us, go chat about that or the show within a show, One More Slice, where we discuss our thoughts about Bake Show slash Bake Off. And I'm at a point where I honestly don't remember which one is which. I don't remember what you guys call it over there. Is it Bake Off? Bake Off. It's okay. Bake Off, yeah. And it should be Bake Off everywhere, but you can thank Pillsbury for copyrighting that term. If you want to hear us talk all about that, go check out one more thing. It's a good time. Uh, we love doing the show for you. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great little way to get some extra uh, flip screen in your feed every week while also helping us uh, keep the show rolling. Um, there's a bunch of other cool stuff you can get there, like our Twitch archive. You can become a Patreon producer, all that stuff. So uh, if you want to show your support for the show, it's the best way to do it. Go check it out. Um, but for everything else, if you've got no bucks to toss our way, head over to flipscreen.games. That is our website where we have links to everywhere else we are on the web, our Twitter, our Discord. Uh, you can get our, our email questions at flipscreen.games. All of those are great ways that you can write into the show and be a part of the conversation or keep the conversation going after the show ends over on the Discord. Um, so all the folks that you hear this week, they either, you know, are a member of the discord or wrote in one of those cool ways, just like you can. So, uh, I hope, I hope you'll take the flip screen games challenge and next week, right into the show. We'd love to hear from you. So, uh, the last thing that I'll plug, right, is the Twitch channel. Of course, twitch.tv every Thursday. We're there doing some kind of multiplayer game, some kind of weird thing that we're doing with the community. Last week, we played a little Back for Blood, uh, but as the time that you're listening to this, tomorrow, we'll be doing a stream of N64 games. So what will those be? Who's to say? Maybe you come to the stream, you tell us what game that you want to see, and we'll play it. Look at that. It's amazing. You can't, you can't beat a plug like that. It's so actionable. So go check it out tomorrow. We'll be there. Twitch.tv slash Flip Screen Games. Come hang out with us. And uh, let us know everyone what... Wants to, everyone wants to see Operation uh, Win Back because everyone knows what that game is, right? I feel like we should play it for that reason alone, right? I, <laughs> I need to know what it is. I thought it was Resident <laughs> Evil and I was really disappointed when it wasn't. So I'm going to give it a chance. I'm sorry. Is, is Wind Back what they call Resident Evil in the UK? Is that a thing? No. And we don't even call it Biohazard. It's it's just Resident Evil, sadly. <laughs> I think it's. I have no idea what it is, actually. 
<laughs> just like some, some I think it's game. gonna be the game that nobody touches outside <laughs> of the fact of finding out what it is and then they're never gonna touch it again. <laughs> I hope that somebody in our audience is like a huge Operation Windback fan right now is just like unbelievable. These ca- casuals, they don't even know Operation Windback. <laughs> It's going to be someone's game, right? Everyone's got that one game that's like a niche to everyone else, but it's just like their thing. Mine's Toy Story 2. Everyone knows that. And mm-hmm. and I don't know what I don't know what your two niches would be from your childhood that uh, no one else has ever heard of, but you will just write home all day long and night about this specific retro video game. Um... I don't know, like, I feel like I have lots of good ones, but a lot of them are, are things we've talked about a lot, and other, like, like Monster Rancher is one that I feel like nobody really fucks with those yeah, games. Yeah, no one knows that. But, like, a few people in the community are like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, like, that's a thing. So, I, I feel like that's probably the most mainstream answer I have for that question. Because, mm-hmm. like, other what ones, I think of, like, Gex, what? I loved that franchise, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. Gex, you yeah. mentioned that before, yeah. What was that pogo stick monster rancher game? Monster that rancher amazing. hop about. <laughs> yes. That, that, oh I played that for hours. It was I amazing. loved that game. And it was so, it's so weird. It has nothing to do with monster rancher as a property. It's just like a weird pogo stick game. And they were like, yeah, monster rancher. That's the IP that'll put this over. Like, <laughs> it's so fucking weird to me. It's a perfect game. It's a good one. It really is. <laughs> bring it back. Hashtag bring back hop about. Let's go. <laughs> but you, do you have any other ones you can think of? of it, like, um, You know, I don't know. I guess like I played a lot of Glover and that was, but that one I feel like a lot of people know about. Um, Lego racer is the kart racer that never got any attention on N64 okay. and it was brilliant. It was like, Every it was really difficult for me because it was one of the few games that needed a uh, a memory card like in like the one that you plug into the controller or whatever. Oh, the the memory pack. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh no, I don't, I don't have one of those. So I literally would just try to beat that game in one run. Never did, but it's really cool because the better you do on the races, you unlock new sets to build cars out of and it, it's got oh, a pretty cool. good like car building lego thing going on with it it's awesome there you go yeah we're gonna have to stream that one sometime that sounds really fun i hope it comes to the switch online thing if it did i'd probably go pretty wild because like i said i never beat it because i could never save <laughs> <laughs> you're like finally so I- yeah, I would revisit that. I mean, I guess I could buy a pack now, but my N64 controllers are all pretty dead at this point. <laughs> you got to do a 100% playthrough on the stream. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject of N64 controllers, did either of you pick up the Switch Online one in the end? I wanted to. They sold out. Dude, yeah. yeah. They sold out so quickly. I, I clicked on it and I put one in my cart, but I was like busy. So I was like, okay, I got I got one in my cart. And then as soon as I got back, I was like, what? It's gone. Why? <laughs> so I tried, but yeah, they, they sold out really quickly. Oh, that's a shame. I, I was going to get one. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I don't really like the N64 controller. And um, I'm still hoping they'll do some other colors at some point. And then, and then I changed my mind and I was like, no, I think I do want more one. Even if I don't really use it all that much, I think it'll be fun to play. Yeah, I just like, want more enough time on on stream, like with the actual yeah. official controller. You should do and, that. Oh my god! And, and I can't get one now because they they they're sold out. So I'm gonna oh. have to to wait and see if I, they ever come back in stock. I'm wondering if I can They'll get one like in the wild. Come back. Like, do you think like if we ran to like targets or something, we oh. might find one? They're exclusive to Switch Online. Yeah. Damn. Okay. I don't think we'll be able to find them that way, but I do think they'll come back in stock. Like yeah. the the other controllers have all come back. Like they're pretty available yeah. if you want to get back uh, the NES or SNES controllers. So, yeah, I, I'm hoping they come back sooner than later. But also, everything's like you know slow production, slow shipping these mm-hmm. days. So, and it might this just is take not a little priority longer. over yeah. like the the other controllers that they've got on the go and the Switch OLED and all of that stuff. It's so strange, though, the the Mega Drive controller still hasn't gone on sale in Europe. I know the Genesis controller oh. went on sale over there, and I think Japan's 
Mega Drive controller went on sale because obviously they've got the six button while we've got the three button. But the one in Europe never went up for pre-order the same time as the N64 controller, which was very strange. Yeah. But then again, our Metroid Amiibos still aren't here either. So, you know, Europe's just getting delay after delay at the moment when it comes to Nintendo products. Mm -hmm. It seems to be yeah. a lot in life. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if you all like Nintendo a little bit more. It's true. <laughs> hey, we like Nintendo plenty over here. Bunch of PlayStation <laughs> fanboys over there in the UK. Yeah, PlayStation <laughs> territory. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. But speaking of, right, like we said, uh, N64 is dropping... You know, very imminently. By the time you're listening to this, it's it's available, right? So yeah, you've uh, already sped run Ocarina of Time. You're you're <laughs> done with that. You moved on to the next game. Whole thing's done already. So my my question uh, to y'all is, you know, it's it's not out yet at the time of this recording, but um, like I said, it's right on the horizon. Like, what are you most excited to play? Right? Like, what what's the game that you want to jump into first? Yeah. I only care about one, which is Ocarina of Time, and that's only because I was streaming it via emulation, and I uh, wanted an official way to play it, and now I have one. Um, but I have no nostalgia, really, other than for Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario 64. I tried Super Mario 64 in the 3D All-Stars collection, and Mario Kart, if I'm going to play Mario Kart, I'm going to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So, other than Ocarina of Time, there's nothing really in that launch lineup that, that grabs me all that much. What about you? Oh, man, I'm looking at the launch lineup. It's definitely the weaker of <laughs> of the launch lineup and stuff. I mean, it's got cool stuff. I think normally I would really go to Super Mario 64, but I played it so recently with the collection sure. that I'm just like, I don't know if I need 100% this game again already this year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely not. Like two times in one year is is excessive, I would say, for Mario yeah, 64. That, that, that's a lot. No, I'm not speed Mario it. <laughs> um, Ocarina of Time, though, yeah, I'm, I might, you know, that's the obvious one to hop into. But of multiplayer stuff, Mario Tennis 64 is definitely worth playing Hell online. Yeah, Chewy, that was going to be my answer. It's Mario Tennis yeah. 64 and Star Fox 64. Those are the two that I am most excited to jump into. Yeah, those no, are going to be awesome no. online. You get to see the origins of Waluigi. That's the first game he was in. It's it's a big deal. It's groundbreaking. <laughs> Is that the first and last game he was in? Because they just don't put him in games anymore. Wow, he's in like every Mario game, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just not in Smash, yeah. <laughs> he's in Smash. He's just not playable. Yeah, it's true. It's really and sad, he never though. will be. It's really sad. <laughs> That's okay, you know? We can't. We can't all. We can't all be on the. You know, the A tier, right? Like somebody's yeah. got to be the B character. That's why we. <laughs> you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I don't say that out of disrespect. You know, I like Waluigi just fine. Where he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, I mean, as of now, though, there's still a lot of questions about the N64 stuff. Like I know that they've said that we can switch, and it's not a problem for you lot in in. NTSC regions, but in PAL areas, we've had slow versions of games since the N64. Um, mm. And I know they said you can swap between the two, swap between the 60 hertz version and the 50 hertz version. I'm so curious as to how that works. Do you have to pick it at the beginning? Can you do it on the fly? Does it is it standard to the PAL version or the NTSC version? I'm very curious as to how they handle it. All. I don't know. It's never been yeah. a thing I've ever had to think about. Yeah, you've always had fast games. Mm -hmm. We always had the slow ones. Yeah. I, why? I, why is that a thing? Do we know? Like, I've, so, it's so uh, weird. It's to do with TV frame rates. Um, so your TVs ran at um, twenty three point nine seven frames per second, and ours ran at twenty five frames per second. Ah. So to get yeah. they had to insert an extra frame, uh, and to do that they had to slow the the game down to get that extra frame in. You know, I so looking at this list, I got to say I'm also very excited to go back to uh like Yoshi's Story. I was yeah. just, I had the 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 footage playing in the background. I haven't played that game in years and I loved that game as a kid. <laughs> sure, I I, I so never had easy. that one. Oh, so charming. That yeah, style I, is so good. I did hear like you, that that game requires a lot of playthroughs, right? To actually like see all the different levels cuz you so. get like 
yeah, you get like certain fruit or whatever at the end of the level and it determines which one you can go to next. I thought that sounded like a headache, but I want to see what it's like. <laughs> you two are never going to guess the other platform that Operation Winback came uh, uh, came out on. The other, I don't okay. Uh, Commodore 64. I don't know. <laughs> PS2. What? That's the only other platform it came out on. Yeah, they it came out. It? It, yeah, it came out in um, September 1999 on N64, and then uh, December 2000 on PS2. Huh. Dang. Like a year later, they just ported the game over. That's interesting. It's one of the very late games. I'm very curious as to to how it plays. Well, you'll be able to find out soon enough. Uh, or so, even what it is. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, or even what it is. <laughs> I have no idea what genre it is or anything. Like, I'm, I have no, no idea. <laughs> just go in totally blind. Don't look anything up because I know the genre of game now. You just, like, boot it up and, and just, like, guess. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... What of the what of the second wave are the ones that you're most excited for? So we know the ones that we already know are coming are Majora's Mask, F Zero X, Banjo Kazooie, Mario Golf, Kirby sixty four, uh, Paper Mario, and Pokemon Snap. I think from that list, it's got to be Kirby sixty four for me. Oh, I think it's Paper Mario or Majora's Mask for me. I've never played Majora's Mask. I've never got past Ocarina of Time. <sighs> we should um, stream why that. I played that game was so yeah. hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe not because i couldn't even jump down a hole in ocarina of time i don't know how i'm gonna fare a hard zelda game because this one's already pretty hard for me majora's is like hard in a different way it's just so obtuse like it's so like oh yeah. i need a guide it has like heavy point and click adventure energy where it's like okay like you have to like help these people solve all their little problems and like it's not like the dungeons are are dungeons that's fine they're they're about as difficult as you would expect but like it's the more like hmm i'm in this town how do i fix this couple's marriage like stuff like that <laughs> where it's like i don't yeah. know wander yeah. around and talk to people and try to figure shit out <laughs> use a guide <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so hard to like navigate through anything oh. in that game i have my personal guide pete who joins me on all of my zelda escapades he helped me through the the one in um, Link's Awakening with the big ball, and we did that did. in like thirty yeah. minutes flat. It was great, and he's been navigating me through Ocarina along with along with Doc, and I think Zade's been helping out as well. Yeah, in the, in the Twitch streams, I, it's always funny because like I feel like I'm the guide, but then they're my guides. Where I'm like, oh, I don't remember what to do. What do you guys look this up, please? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember. But I know Doc sped run that game. Yeah, like ton, dozens oh, that... and dozens of times. He knows it like the back of his and hand. Randomizers and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, dude, this whole list of the upcoming ones is just like all of them I want to play. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie, always. And Paper Mario is definitely at the top. I've been wanting to revisit that one, especially after yeah. playing the most recent Paper Mario. It was like... It's fine. It's a different game, but the battles in that just like feel kind of pointless, not worth doing. But this one, the fights are actually pretty awesome. But I've also never played an F Zero game, so oh really? I, I, yeah, I know. I, I think I might go through an F Zero thing now that I've been doing the Metroid thing, and I'm just like, all right, let, let's fill in this catalog of Nintendo stuff I've never played. Oh. Is I that, loved the uh, the GameCube one. Was it GX on the GameCube? I thought it was so fun. I've never played that one, but I played the Super Nintendo one a lot on Wii U. Um, mm. Like, remember when Wii U first came out and they did that thing where they're like, we're going to sell a bunch of games for 30 cents um, because there's no games yeah. on this platform. Like, that was one of them, and I got every one of those games. I played the crap out of it for a while. Um, and is there's that on... no people on this platform. <laughs> is that on the app? Can you play that? I think it I is. I don't think so. Oh, wait, I, is I, it? I think it is. I, I'll have to double check, but uh, yeah, I think I'll definitely want to go and revisit those and just have mm -hmm. my way through because Metroid I had a lot of fun with recently, yeah. and I'm just like, all right, let's see, let's see how the F Zero fans are doing. Are they really? <laughs> is it really worth making this other racing game when there's Mario no. Kart? You know, what, no, though, you're not. right, Chewy. I'm gonna play that too because I've never played I've never played F Zero X. Um, 
And Paper Mario is a good shout out. I haven't played that game since I was like 15, 16. I remember I've, like... I've never played it. Oh. I've my my history with the N sixty four is very limited. We got it far after like the console's release. We had a PS two after we mm -hmm. had like before we had an N sixty four. You should definitely play. It's so good. It's so good. And then after that, play Bug Fables. It, it's awesome. It's like it, I remember it's you currently the yeah. best Paper Mario on Switch. I, I gotta pick that up. I remember <laughs> you talking a lot about that when it came out. I um, I have to go back. I'm at the last boss on that one. It, it, I need to go and do some grinding because I, I can't beat it. <laughs> I gotta say though, a lot of these games are games I would be interested in streaming if people were interested in watching them. Like I would I would do a a, a replay of Paper Mario or like a hundred percent Pokemon Snap thing like something. Like you that. definitely should. Yeah, Pokemon mm -hmm. Snap would be a real chill stream. That would be cool. You just chill out and chat with people. Yeah. Well, you snap some Pokemon. I get a hundred percent that probably in. Probably one stream if we went mm. for a little it's longer. It's not too right? long. Yeah. I feel like you can 100% that game in like five hours. And then, Pete, you need to drive to the world's final blockbuster. Print out. And, <laughs> and see if you can print the photos of the kills. <laughs> <laughs> Did you invest in that little Instax thing? No. To print out your I wanted Polaroid? it so bad and I didn't, I didn't bite well, on it. I have one, but I don't have... Um, Pikachu uh, cover Pokemon thing. Pokemon Snap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pokemon Snap, you should get it. And then you print out all your pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I wonder think all it does is it does, it just prints, it, it saves it to the gallery and it just uses the mobile, you know, the, the goofy IP address in yeah. the address mm -hmm. bar that it sends. It's, it's not the slickest of solutions, but it does the job. It would work, though, like with this, too. You could print out your Pokemon Snap N64 stuff oh well, maybe i'll try that yeah i'll have like a gallery of, of pokemon that'd be sweet i want to see those on your fridge when when i visit <laughs> <laughs> i need to get a cardboard cut of a fridge behind me <laughs> so, so photoshopped one in at one point and get then the photoshopped me with like bags fridge. of cash i did i tried getting an xbox mini fridge they saw that in like minutes i couldn't get oh, one man I kind of wanted that. <laughs> Me too. It's so goofy, and it's the exact size I think of a of an Xbox Series X. That was that was like the prime example of a thing where I'm like, I want this so bad, I don't need it at all, and if I get it, Sarah will fucking murder me because it's just like what an absolute waste of money, right? Like I'm so close to the fridge when I'm in my basement to have a mini fridge down there would just be peak fucking laziness, and to spend extra money on a fancy mini fridge that looks like an xbox is just next level extra <laughs> yeah that being scalped like crazy at the moment as well because they're really so cool <laughs> it's awesome and there's like <laughs> pro there's, there's probably like a thousand of them in the world or whatever you know like that makes it so much more attractive of like oh i want one oh, 150 pounds on ebay that Jeez. that's not as high as i would uh, expect well, yeah i would expect a little is higher 90, it's 90 quid that's well, that's ninety quid brand new. Yeah, but I mean that's a good investment, like five times. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So while we're on the uh, the you know N sixty four nostalgia trip conversation, uh, I wanted to check in with y'all on your hype levels for uh, Mario Party Superstars because that game is also right around the corner. Like we are coming up on it, and I got to tell you. Uh, personally, my hype levels are through the roof. Oh yeah, mine too. Uh, they're crazy high. I I did a like a impromptu just chatting stream on Twitch on Friday, and uh, me and a bunch of other people that tuned in, uh, including Olaf, watched the rewatched the trailer, and we were just like game after game after game. I was getting nostalgia trips. I was like, oh, it's got. Uh, pushy penguins. Oh, it's got the one with the chain chomp where you flash the light in his face. Oh, it's got the <laughs> one with the book that falls over. Like all of the mini games that I remember as a kid and absolutely loved are here, along with some iconic classic boards. I mean, none of the ones are, are the boards that I really have nostalgia for because I have nostalgia for the GameCube games, not the N64 games. But I didn't realize how many of the games in the GameCube, uh, the mini games in the GameCube games, were basically the same ones from the N64. So it's, yeah. it's awesome to finally have them here. And a hundred mini games is such a nice number, and the fact that you can play all of them online with friends is so good. I'm really, really looking forward to to get my hands on this on Friday. 
Yeah, the boards is, are are interesting because I remember a lot of them, but I'm realizing like when I played those Mario parties, I picked different boards than those. <laughs> so for me, I'm just like, you know what? This is cool. I'm going to play a lot of the boards that maybe I didn't spend as much time on, and that's got me really excited. But yeah, the mini games especially, I love that they're bringing back the old controls <laughs> with the spinning the joystick. I don't know if you I all saw I don't love that. that. Because how many drifting Joy-Cons are people going to ruin true. now? <laughs> I, I love it sarcastically, mostly because I want to call support. <laughs> I, I want to call support and ask if they're going to sell or, you know, give out those, like, wrist protector, palm protector gloves oh, yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Did I'm... they actually do those? They make gloves? That was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my like God. Like, with the original, um, where they would gave it out to people. Yeah. Um, Anyone who complained about hurting themselves, they would send you like a, a hand guard. I definitely got blisters from those games. It was bad. Seriously, why did they revert from just hitting that A button so many times? It was a way better control. Just slam that A button than do the mm -hmm. the spin on the stick because it's, it's gonna buzzed up so many Joy Cons. It's gonna be insane. It's classic yeah. though. Like you got it's like that's how the game's played. You know. That's mm -hmm. part of yeah, it. Oh, true. And you know, I'm what? not gonna let I'm... anybody use my Joy Cons to play this game, though. I'll tell you that. Oh no, no I'm not either. They can bring their own, Pro or they can use one of my drifting ones. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> options they've got. I mean, it might give them an advantage at that point. The ones that are already drifting, it's already <laughs> free spin, you know. <laughs> well, possibly, yeah. I love it. It's a, instead of a god, there's just a notice now in the game. To avoid irritation or damage, don't rotate it with the palm of your hand. People like uh, <laughs> listen to that. Try telling a kid not to do that when they're up against a friend and they're trying to to beat up, them in a game. That's, up against uh, the hard uh, computer players, those things are so difficult to beat. Yeah, you might as well just call them cheats instead of hard. That's the old, that's all it does. Is it cheats. I, I, <laughs> I swear, there's it. There's no way that AI is programmed to do anything other than cheat. Yeah. You know, I, the other thing I'm really excited about, though, is the online stuff, like the Mount Mini yeah. games thing. Yeah. I have been addicted to WarioWare. Like, every single week, I put, like, probably another five to ten hours into that Damn. game just, wow. from playing, just from playing the the challenges over and over, trying to get the high scores and stuff. I still haven't beaten out one of my friends in one of them. I did tie him once, but... Yeah, the, just knowing that we're going to have some like online challenges and we're probably going to have high scores against friends, I get really competitive with that. So I'm going to be playing a ton of those. I'm just so excited that we have the ability to play online like out of the box. Like that's going to just yeah. be such a game changer, I think. Like I I feel like it's going to be tough for me to want to stream anything else for a bit, honestly. Yeah. And the fact that we can like save our progress because like the the most annoying part about Super Mario Party is just like once you disconnect it's like all right, got to start from yeah. where one once again and then this one it's like it's got all of these options, you can mm -hmm. change things in the middle of the game. It's great. Yeah, it's I didn't know about back. that. Olaf yeah. told me about that. It so you, P if you didn't know, you can switch from say you start a match and it's 10 rounds. Uh, and you're just like, oh, you know, we'll I'll play for 10 rounds. But you get midway through or like towards the end, you can boost it up to 20 if you want. Oh. And just change it and just be like, oh, let's go for a bit longer. Let's make it 20. Instead. Oh, my God. We're having such a good, fun, good, good time with it. Dude, we got to make that a thing on the stream where like you, you could like spend channel points and we'll like add rounds to it. Or, or like, <laughs> oh, if you sub, like we'll, we'll add t 10 more rounds or whatever, you know, like something crazy like that. Like this we're game will gonna, go forever. <laughs> we're gonna play fifty round games this entire time. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's fine. I love Mario Party, man. I will play. I will play Mario Party until I'm dead in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm down too. I love it. See, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Uh, I, I think it's gonna be. I think that's gonna be a game that's in heavy rotation for me for the like rest of the life cycle of the switch and i'm really excited about that do mm -hmm. so you think you're relegating uh super mario yeah party? dude is i'm that, never gonna play super mario now? party again ever no way that's a shame uh, do you know the one thing i really love about super mario party is the rhythm games i do yeah. think that mode is really really fun can't play them but online, you're right though. there's 
Listen, I know, but you couldn't play anything online until earlier this year, which is what's yeah. insane about this. But I, I think because thing... sorry, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say we know that from um, data miners, um, Oatmeal Dome was tweeting about it that this is the same engine as Super Mario Party. It uses all the same stuff, the same netcode, all of that stuff. Oh. So presumably they added the online stuff for this game, and then was just like, let's backport it and yeah. bring it over to the Super Mario Party as well. Which is probably smart because they were able to like stress test, work out kinks and stuff. Now I bet you it'll mm -hmm. be a smoother experience at launch for for that data. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I like Super Mario Party fine. I think that game's like a solid seven out of ten. You know, it's 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 good. It's not great. Um, but if this game is as good as I think it's gonna be, then yeah, there's no way I'll go back to it because this is mixing elements of all of my favorite Mario parties in one game. Like, this is the Mario Party I've wanted for, you know, for years. Um, yeah, since now since they got bad. To, now I just want them to do DLC for it and just keep adding classic boards and classic. That's the dream. To do packs for me to sell. I mean, okay, like it was really surprising that didn't happen for Super Mario Party, but this one they literally have so many other boards that they can just yeah, grab just and put in. I'm like, I really on, hope that's so. gotta be. Yeah, like that's I gotta could charge like five to ten dollars a piece for a board. Yeah, I'm selling a season games. pass. I would yeah. pay it. Yeah. I would buy us. I would buy a season pass that is the same cost as this game, if I knew that I was going to get the same number of boards, mm -hmm. like straight up. Which is yeah. a lot of money, but I would do it because that's how much I and, want this. And Sarah's like, "Why have you got a hundred twenty dollars going to Nintendo?" It's just like, "Uh, that's Mario Party. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's important business." <laughs> now nah, she'd get it. <laughs> this, this this is important stuff here write that off business expense it, i mean <laughs> hey it is it is build, a business build <laughs> team building exercises with mario Party. i'm gonna write <laughs> off every nintendo game i bought this year and we'll see if the government comes for me you know um, <laughs> do it do it and let, and let me know how it goes okay you got I might try and do the same <laughs> <laughs> don't worry if i'm committing fraud i will definitely not let them know that uh Steve is my business partner. Steve. <laughs> Steve. Go check out that shady Londoner. Well, they don't know the difference, right? Yeah. Um, no. Everyone in, in, in the United right. Kingdom from London. Exactly. To, you look right. You yeah. get it. Leicester is, might as well be London, right? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of important business, uh, like we said at the top, it has been five years since the reveal of the Nintendo Switch, which makes me feel like a hundred years old. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 weird. It's really weird. And you know, we've we've talked about about this before. I know at least Steve and I have. We've never talked about it on Nintendo Noise. And I wanted to kind of take the opportunity to look back revisit some of our feelings at that time when you know uh we first saw the nx become the nintendo switch and kind of mm -hmm. talking about where nintendo was at at that time what this trailer meant at the time and kind of where we've gone since then and where we feel like things will go from here you know um so yeah. crazily enough i'm gonna show this trailer and you know let's see i'm sure nintendo's gonna strike us for this one but uh this I first... loved that. I loved that trailer. It was so good. That he starts off with Breath of the Wild on the TV, right? And it's yep. It's so it's so good, and it's just like, oh, you know, I fancy uh, getting up, and you think he's gonna turn the TV off or something, and then he just pulls it out of the dock, yep. and just like carries on playing. And I remember everyone online was speculating. I was like, there's no way it's gonna be that fast. It's it, you know, there's gonna be some time to switch between it. And it was just it. It was so, it was one hundred percent accurate. That was it the first that thing that I thought about. It was like, okay, like, but how does this does this really work this well? You know, like, come yeah. on, or is this just a hype it's, trailer? Especially when you're coming off of like the Wii U, that it's just like the slowest console ever. Yep, it takes forever for things to <laughs> go from one screen to another. And, and you um, think about what the promise of the Wii U was and how it never delivered, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, prior to this, it was really tough for me to get on board with this. We'd seen, I like, do you remember those fake leaks? And it was that oval-shaped thing, it yeah. had, and it had like a screen in between with yeah. like the these controls, and and it was like touch buttons or something. And I was like, really, is that what it's going to look like? And on top of that, I was just, I I, I was 
firmly in the camp of Nintendo Gav, the hardware business. Me too. And just and just make games, make Mario and Zelda, and put them on PS4 because I will want I will want to play it there. I I don't want to play it on the Wii U. And then this came out, and I was just like, you know what? I, I get it. I 100 percent get it. I saw it immediately, and I was just like. This is fucking cool. I can take this console that plays anything, and then the more you see of the trailer, the more you're like, "Whoa, is that is that Skyrim that he's playing on a plane?" Right. Like, what's going on here? And then they go to that roof party, which I know became a meme uh, itself Aaron. because nobody <laughs> believed it would be real, but it is real. Is the thing right? Is I remember you ever done that? You ever gone to a roof party? Yeah. And, and like. No way. Okay, not on a roof, but I've gone to a party <laughs> with a Nintendo Switch and plopped it down and played it with somebody before. I have done oh, that. Oh, that's fucking cool. And like, yeah. I I've took done it... that in an airport, but I've never done it at a party. I've done that, <laughs> and like, I used to take it to uh, the bar that I went to in in the town that I grew up in before I moved to to the city. Um, and my friends and I used to go there every Monday night. We knew the bartender that worked there, and we would I would bring in a dock and hook it up to one of the TVs, and we would play Mario Kart. Oh, Mario Kart. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I remember the, the big thing that I took away from it uh, was watching this and and seeing that there were no kids, no families. It was oh, all. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. It was all. It was a real shift in the marketing, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that had been Nintendo's bread and butter since, like, you know, what, the Wii? Uh, even in the GameCube era, that was kind of like they were like the, f- you know, we're more family friendly while gaming's getting more edgy. And, you know, this was the first time where like they had a piece of marketing and that I could remember that was all young adults. You know, it was all millennials. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was yeah. something that I remember before the thing came out. I was like, this is a big deal. Like, that's a huge difference. And that's a huge shift in tone. And I remember literally actually the other day. Um, I had uh, uh, a Facebook memory of myself sharing that trailer and being like, oh, really interesting. Like, there's no families in this. Like, I wonder if this is a, a sign that Nintendo is going to try to start courting the core games market again. And lo and behold, yeah. that, that was what they did, right? Like, it was such mm-hmm. a dynamic shift at the time. And it's funny. You look back on it now and laugh. But, you know, five years ago, like, Nintendo wasn't what they are today. Yeah, you know what? L- looking back at that time, 2016 was a very sad Nintendo year in general. It was like w- we got to see Breath of the Wild at E3 that year. That was like that was it. That was the only thing they showed at yeah. that point and we we're like, "All right, new console is coming very soon." Uh you know, they showed it later that year. But uh, I don't know. Back then I was playing like Amiibo Festival on the Wii U, it was a dark timeline, right? <laughs> I, I was at a they, point... They were talking about the NX all throughout that year, though, right? Yep. Because that was the E3 yeah. they announced, that this wasn't just a Wii U game, and it was coming to the NX as well. Mm-hmm. And obviously, people bought the Wii U with the promise of there's going to be a Zelda game, and it was the final game that was released on that console, and the first yeah. game that was released on the Switch, which is kind of what's crazy about it. Yeah, so I don't know. I think like th- very different time, but also them switching their marketing and changing it to try to capture the core gamers. It's like I think today that I saw that latest my or play my way, whatever that little commercial series Nintendo does, uh, my way to play. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. The the one today, I was like, oh man, they're like really getting back into this family marketing system thing is that <laughs> like the, the one that said buy a switch oled and take it to your family and did not show the switch oled at all in the video like the caption was like yeah purchase the nintendo switch oled model and family of systems and I there is not a switch it. oled until the it's, end at the pack i think shop. it's like the very <laughs> end yeah they add that little switch oled in the graphic <laughs> and uh, yeah basically but yeah now it seems like they're targeting that audience but they really focus like even with the games that we got through through the beginning like everything was so focused on the gamer the core gamer area and i don't know if we're gonna get a year quite like that anymore i think think that was definitely like a huge shift at nintendo where they're like all right we really need to address like we did the family thing with the Wii. It worked great. The Wii U didn't. We need to get back into this. And now, 
I think, like you were saying earlier, Steve, a lot of people were in that camp of like, Nintendo, get out of the console game, just make games. I personally wasn't because I do feel like overall Nintendo makes consoles that work with like their ideas for games. And when I saw the Switch commercial, I was just like, oh man, I get it. Because I was more in a camp of like, dude, just make portable systems. Like you, those are already your best selling systems. Like if you just switch to portable, I think I'd be fine with that. I have a lot of fun with my 3DS. I wouldn't mind the the next 3DS, right? And so for me, mm-hmm. I saw that and I was just like, okay, cool. I can play on the go, but also put this on my TV. It's perfect. They they nailed it. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I I definitely agree with you. After seeing that trailer, I was I was pretty much in on it. But like, I had already kind of been like trying to hype myself up for it because the idea of the NX was something that I thought was really smart. And and you'll, if you'll remember at the time. Uh, there was a news story like about how Nintendo was bringing their handheld and home console development studios under one kind of banner and they would be sharing resources and everything and they would stop kind of dividing those two SKUs. Um, and that was, I remember, the thing that I thought was the most brilliant about the Switch, like even before I had mm-hmm. seen it and it was just the idea of it being some kind of hybrid console was like, yeah, well, I mean, them not having to split their resources across two devices is that's the problem right that was always the problem was that they needed to be able to put out you know because a lot of people would buy their home console or whatever the handheld was at the time as like a nintendo machine and it was very much like i buy this to play nintendo games and whatever else comes out on it comes out on it but like Mm -hmm. That was hard. That was a hard thing to justify on the Wii U with the 3DS. You got a couple big games per year, and that that always was what it was. But like with with the the home consoles, like especially on the Wii U, it was like those big releases were few and far between. And like Steve said, we didn't get a Zelda until the end of that generation. We never got a Mario. Like you know, with the yeah. Switch, you know, I feel like there are at least three or four or more big Nintendo games on it every single year. There's at least one big game a quarter every you know every year um and i think that's been a huge part of why it's been successful aside from the fact that the hardware is just smart like the idea of it being this unique hybrid console um is in and of itself attractive but it has an incredible library you know and like when i think about why i play the switch as much as i do and why i it's my favorite nintendo console and you know on and on and on like it's because of all of those things Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Yeah, and I think I I always told people like the the situation that Nintendo has put themselves is like both good and bad. Like over the years, they didn't get too much third party support for a lot of their consoles. They really had to focus on making their own games. But in turn, I think like more than any other company, like Nintendo puts out tons and tons of games. They always have something coming out, and it's just like, I mean. My, my always joke variety with... as well. It's never yeah, like because yeah. I think of Sony games, for example, and their their games I think are usually a very similar format. It's that single player narrative third person driven, open world action person. adventure that's, game. That's what they do. <laughs> but you think of Nintendo, they do all sorts. You've got RPGs, you've got platformers, you've got sport games, you've got kart races, you've got shooters. They do a little bit of everything. There's something for everyone. So they never did have to rely on that third party support, which I think is why it's so strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but that like launch lineup, I I don't I think they kind of knew it wasn't really enough, but they knew what was in the bag. Because I remember scrambling and like at the beginning, I was hungry. I was buying everything for that console. <laughs> I was just like, oh, there's something new. You know, uh, Snipper Clips, the, um, the, like, Geometry Machine game or whatever it is that the we talked about. Blaster Master Zero. Yeah, Fast RMX. <laughs> People bought Troll and I because they had no idea if it was any good. I think yeah. that was such a fun thing, though, too, about the early days of the Switch was, like, when it came out and it was actually good and it had a lot of good games, but then you kind of got through them and everybody was like, what are you playing on Switch? Like, what, like, what, you know, like... There was that fervor among the audience of everyone was just so excited for Nintendo to be back, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there was communities born from it. I mean, we met Pixel Par and Loot Pots and all of that. That's why we do what we do today. The, the N- Nintendo Switch Reddit 
such a bubbling community so excited about this new console and like it was really cool you know the stuff that uh chris brandrick does with like um switch weekly, he's yeah, done switch new, weekly. Uh, five years he's been writing that newsletter now it's crazy yeah and I, I remember uh chris posted about how um like right after this uh like right after seeing this you know he like was scrambling to go get the the url for switch weekly and everything and you know like lock it down and uh yeah it, it is it is funny to think about just how long how long it really has been with the console you know um and yeah i mean i guess it's it's interesting to think about too because you know we are we're pretty far into the life cycle of the switch now and i don't i don't really feel like it's showing its age too much you know like i i think that the current state of the switch is still strong beginning to it's beginning I, I to, kinda, but I think I think games are really pushing it, and I think the the one I always think about is is Bowser's Fury and the fact that that mm-hmm. runs differently handheld to docked, and that's a compromise Nintendo's never made on any of their games previously. They've always ran at the same frame rate. Mm-hmm. Might be a different resolution. There might be some embellishments that are reduced down, but the fact that they had to half the frame rate on um on uh docked i think it was uh, versus handheld um really goes to show that it, it's pushing it at this point yeah and i think you know that's something where a lot of people are going to feel more and more as more people get their hands on like ps5s and xbox series x's and that sort of thing like now that they're gonna have something leagues beyond to compare to it's gonna be like oh okay Switch to please, <laughs> let me let me get my hands on that one, and I mm-hmm. think we are seeing it with like like you're saying with some of the more recent releases from Nintendo. I think they could definitely they're they're pushing the system with each game, and they can only push it so much before it's just like, all right, we need that next console that's a little bit stronger and can handle these things, but make it a lot a bit more strong, please, Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah, I I think that's the big thing is like I I want to see them just continue to double down and iterate on the idea of the Switch. I don't really feel like oh, it yeah. needs to change. Just fix mm-hmm. Joy-Con drift, like get us a, you know, higher resolutions, but quicker load times, like all that stuff. Like that's all I need at this point. Like if the if Nintendo never made another console and just gave me a new Switch every 5 years or whatever for the rest of my life, I'd be a okay with that. Well, do you remember that Bloomberg article that was talking about that's the their strategy thing. and how that yeah they're following mm-hmm. that phone thing and the that ten year cycle. like life cycle or whatever of the switch mm-hmm. they were talking about right? You just keep buying a new one, you know. Oh, you're kind of ready for a new switch. Here's a switch OLED. Oh, you're ready for a new switch. Here's the switch two that does 4K now, and it's a you know all of your games will run at 60 frames a second. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope so. So we got a couple. Uh, we got a couple uh, thoughts from the folks at home who wrote in, and I wanna I wanna get some of their thoughts right out here. So Affy Lockhart, one of our Patreon supporters, wrote in and said, "I remember seeing the reveal trailer and being so excited. Big Nintendo games at home and on the go. Dang, I was so ready for this to become the future of games, and now I couldn't be without my Switch." Yeah, yeah, me, same same here. And my play style has changed a lot over the years because I used to work in an office full time when the when the Switch came out, and it was so nice to be able to take that to work every day and play that on my lunch break or play it while I was commuting on the way home on the bus or whatever. Uh, now I work from home, so I'm very much more docked than I was handheld, but I still love the flexibility, like being able to pick up Disco Elysium and go play in bed at night and just round out the day. And then when I want to go and play on the TV, I can mm. do that. And, you know, you've got the, the flexibility to do it. And I think that's what really sold the Switch to people. People love handheld gaming and people like being able to play on, on the TV. I know, Pete, you're more docked than um, handheld. No, I think, reverse. Chewie, you, oh, you're more handheld than docked? Yeah. Are you I, the opposite? I that, pretty Chewie, much never play than handheld? docked. I'd say I'm... Pr- <sighs> I used to be more even. I'd say I'm more on my TV these days, just with like all the streaming and recording that I do on it. But I'd say when I was pretty even, and even to this day, there's so many games that I run into that are like indie games that are only on Xbox, and I'm just like, man, I would play this so much more if I could just take it to my bed (laughs) and hang out with it over there. Uh, But yeah, like for me... 
uh, the console being both portable and home, I, I just don't want to go back to that because I got the Switch at a time where I moved pretty far from my family at that point. I think that was when I was like in Utah or so. So trips to California were so much better, like taking the plane, having my Switch on me, even like a road trip, just being able to take it so easily with me and not worry about other things where I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just bring a charger. I don't really need to play on a TV while I'm here. And at this point even, like so many of my family members have Switches and I'm just like, oh cool, I can just take my Switch and they've got a dock if we want to play a game on mine. There it is. So just like there's so much of a convenience factor with it that I don't want to get away from anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Uh, so this one comes from Trendy Brenny, another one of our Patreon supporters who wrote in and said, my own Switch is turning four and I'll always remember my personal launch lineup, in quotes, of Rayman Legends, Super Mario Odyssey, Snipper Clips, and Shantae Have Genie Hero. With all the currently released Switch games at your disposal... Uh, what would you consider your best personal launch lineup of four games, physical or digital, that would really sell anyone on their new console? And no cheating, Steve. I know you want to say Nintendo Switch Online is one of the four games, but that's cheating. But a collection title wouldn't be <laughs> if you're trying to hit quantity numbers. I think this you is know, a fun I, question. I gotta find these. I gotta find these loopholes, right? I cheated on the flip screen one. Or you cheat in everything. Around. I just find <laughs> loopholes. It's not cheating. It's a loophole. No, you're a cheater. Uh, I think that's you're fine. A cheater. But no, that's that's fair. If this is the rule, Switch Online's not allowed. That's that's no problem. Do you know what though? I think that year one launch lineup. If I'm picking, was it four games? It doesn't have to be year game? one though. Is the thing. But Brandy's saying oh, wait, no, right but, now. Uh, yeah, yeah. But okay. it's four games, right? Yeah. And they're all Switch games. I can't just like pick and choose like an Xbox game that would sell the console, presumably. Oh, yeah, it has to be a Switch game. What are you talking yeah. about? Well, you know, that's what I was just double checking. But I think the year one launch lineup for me is the one I would pick. I would go with Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Those four games would sell me on a console, and I think they sell anyone. I mean, you might want to swap out Splatoon for Smash. It depends the kind of game you're into. Are you more into shooters or fighters? Chew <laughs> shaking his head. And I might <laughs> no. swap out. Do you know what? I'm swapping Mario Kart out for uh, Animal Crossing for my personal. I would. Lineup. I would say that that's that's a good baseline to work off of, though, because I think my personal launch lineup, like if I, because you're saying like to sell on anyone, like I think I would say it's those first three. It's Breath of the Wild, mm. Mario Odyssey, and Mario Kart 8. And then I think the fourth title is a flex title depending on the gamer, right? Like if you're someone who likes like, you know, like life sims and stuff, Animal Crossing, right? If you're someone who likes JRPGs, Fire Emblem. If you're somebody who mm -hmm. likes, uh, you know, I don't know, shooters, right? Splatoon, right? Like I, I, I feel like that's, I think those three should be on lock though. I think Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and Mario Kart 8 are like must pickups. Yes. You know? Or or can I give you like a fifty dollar eShop credit and say go and pick a bunch of indie tiles because they're just there's an abundance of them that you I, should I'm play? doing the first three and then I'm handing you an eShop card and being like pick one of these and games go, and I give it, them yeah. a pre approved <laughs> list here by genre. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys are also skipping the best games from that year one launch. We've got one, two, switch, arms, oh yeah, arms, Fire Emblem Warriors. God, I forgot <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors existed. Tournament. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. I think a lot of the games that came out each year, it was pretty well spread out. Where the you, Nintendo had like a really huge game that people were really looking forward mm -hmm. to each year. Uh, first year, obviously Zelda. Next year, obviously Smash, right? But I don't know. I guess in terms of like something to throw in variety and make it strange, I need to have Animal Crossing in that launch lineup because... I don't know. We went a lot of times without just something like pretty relaxing life sim type of thing from Nintendo. Uh, Zelda, definitely. Breath of the Wild. And then, I mean, I, Splatoon 2. I gotta have Splatoon 2. Those are some of my faves. And then as for the last one, I guess we have life sim, single player, open world game, competitive shooter, and then... I don't know. I want to say like something pretty wacky and strange that just like people would pick up just because maybe something like Clubhouse Games. 
Clubhouse Games is a good one. I think a Mario Party would be good in there as well. I think yeah. Superstars, I think, is probably going to sell a lot yeah. of people on it. That's going to be And a I would have said the the 3D All-Stars collection. Can we bring that back even though it doesn't exist anymore? Like, no. if you have Mario mm-hmm. Nostalgia. Can't do it. It's, it was limited time. Oh. It's unavailable now. Unless Just you give them your copy. Mario 35. Mario 35. <laughs> Everybody would get it. <laughs> And I'm telling them to subscribe to Switch Online, Brandy. I know they're not allowed, to, I'm not allowed to give them that, but I'm telling them to subscribe so they can play Pac Man 99 and Tetris 99 because those are two phenomenal games that they should absolutely There you play. go. That's true. Just having access to Tetris 99 would be huge at launch, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I would have played the hell out of that game if it was available at launch. I mean, I played a lot of it anyway, but at launch, oh, my God. I would have mm-hmm. lost, like, a lot of time in that game. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm going to give uh, one of our Patreon producers, Zaid Eda, the last word here. Uh, he wrote in and said, man, I can't believe it's already been five years since that initial release trailer for the Switch. I can still remember exactly where I was when that reveal happened. I was at home on a Skype call with my coworkers at GameStop, and our jaws all dropped. Even now, a few weeks removed from the Switch second refresh with the Switch OLED, or SWOLED, if you prefer, it's still crazy to me that we have access to a hybrid system like this. One other thing as well, the Switch opened me up to many new people and opportunities. I thank the Switch for introducing me to you guys and the amazing community that's been built. So thanks, Nintendo Switch. I appreciate you for giving me some awesome gaming experiences and helping me meet some awesome people. I think that's a nice note to end it on. Thank you so much for writing in there, Zaid. I think yeah, uh, absolutely. it's a sweet note. And I, I agree with that. I think uh, that is that is probably one of the things that um, that I guess I don't always think about sometimes when I think about like why the Switch is so special. Is like, you know, I, would, I wouldn't know either of you two if it wasn't for the Nintendo Switch, right? I've met folks all yeah. around the world, um, which is really cool, you know? And uh, this whole community has been built because of the Nintendo Switch, so... Shout out to uh, shout out to the Nintendo Switch. You're you're a special little console, and uh, we love you. Mm-hmm. So uh, of course we'll be back next week to talk more about the Nintendo Switch and uh, and 64 games and Mario Party. And it's next week's gonna be pretty crazy. It's gonna be like the sequel to this episode. I feel like you know it's the last week yeah. before well, the New Horizons update. That's oh, true. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you know, I'm just really excited to be able to report back and tell everyone what Operation Winback is because I'm, I'm <laughs> very good at this It's really, it's what, the, it's what the people need to know, right? Uh, so if you want to write in to the show, just like all these fine folks did, uh, about any of the stuff we discussed this week or any of the stuff we'll be discussing next week, remember there's a bunch of ways you can do that. You can come follow us on Twitter. You can come join the Discord and keep the conversation rolling. You can chat with each of us. We're there all the time, uh, members of the community. You know, it's, it's a great place to be. It's a safe, inclusive place for you to come talk games. So I hope you'll come do so if you haven't yet. Uh, and then you can write into us at questions at flipscreen.games um, if you're an old person and you use email, you know. Um, so check that out. And then, of course, uh, head to flipscreen.games. DJ games. wrote in. DJ wrote in, but he was too late. So, DJ, next week, if you're listening to this, r- write in a question. Tell us. And come and play Super Mario Party. With, not, not Super Mario. Mario Party Superstars with us. Because I know you're going to get it, and you should come and play with us. He bought two copies. We all know this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. So head over to flipscreen.games. That's our website where we've got links to everywhere else that we are on the web, including our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash flipscreengames, where we'll be there streaming N64 games tomorrow. And then, of course, last but not least, head over to the Patreon if you want to show your support. Uh, you can head over there, patreon.com slash flipscreengames. We have our Patreon exclusive show, one more thing. We have our Twitch archives that you can get at the level above that. You can become a Patreon producer and I'll say your name on the air and you get to vote and you get all kinds of preferential treatment. It's great. And you get to help support the show and, uh, and make sure that, you know, um, that our Xbox mini fridges stay stacked with food. Uh, so <laughs> thank you all so much again. We really appreciate you and your support. We'll catch you next week for another episode of Nintendo noise. Bye. I saluted with the wrong hand. Oof.